all right well the people on my channel have spoken and I guess it's time to uh, do something non Tyler Perry related for a change now what we're going to be talking about today is just my thoughts on the Monique Breakfast Club interview from this past Friday now if you haven't known Monique actually called for a Netflix boycott due to being I guess you could say a lowball in terms of her Netflix deal only being offered at five hundred thousand dollars afterwards she called for a boycott due to uh, gender equality um, racial issues basically a lot of the po uh, quote unquote popular movements today is being associated with her being I guess you could say uh, blackballed or lowballed and this moved to the breakfast club not too long afterwards as you know Charlemagne the God uh, Angela Lee Angela Yee uh, D DJ Envy, I guess you could say this focus more on Charlemagne for giving her the donkey of the day. And if you aren't familiar, donkey today is pretty much a quote unquote title. Um, I think that's given out on like a daily basis, Monday through Friday, uh, based off a person who did something that was, well, something worthy enough to give them the title of donkey. And, you know, I will say this much. It does have a catchy jingle of donkey of the day. I'm talking about the donkey of the day. Yeehaw. I mean, that's kind of, you know, how it sounds. But um, I actually sat back and watched the Monique interview twice already. I think it was about almost 50 minutes long. And uh, I have to say the first time watching it, it was a bit cringy to watch or listen to. I mean, there were times where I couldn't even look at the screen just because it was like it just it didn't even feel like an interview you know like if you look at uh Kevin Hart when he came on the breakfast club to talk about you know um his um infidelity and his current marriage and whatnot you know you can actually sit down and listen to that I mean most people may or may not agree with how he handled the situation but at the end of the day he came up there said what he had to say and that was pretty much it with the Monique interview there was a lot of tension because she pretty much came on there. Uh, her husband was on the phone line, so pretty much they were both there. And uh, it, it seemed like, you know, the Breakfast Club, especially Charlemagne, uh, especially Charlemagne, was on the defense or, you know, for most of the uh, interview itself. I mean, a lot of people have, you know, chimed in saying that, you know, Charlemagne should be ashamed of himself or, you know, uh, pretty much giving a negative light on a black female who's trying to make it in the industry. Um, people are saying Monique, you know, because she's using these racial and gender issues on top of her personal problem to make it seem like it's something worthy of a boycott. And I mean, I let me just put it this way. Looking at the interview twice, I feel like Charlemagne and Monique both made valid, valid points. They both made valid points. The thing was, though, in my opinion, I feel like you need to watch Monique on the Sway Sway in the Morning, another great radio show. Uh, they have a YouTube channel as well. I try to keep up to date on uh, Breakfast Club and Sway, especially if there are people I actually want to hear, you know, what they have to say in an interview. I feel like some of the things she said in that interview may kind of like conflict with what was said in the Breakfast Club interview. Uh, I feel like at one point, uh, Charlamagne was talking about, you know, well, why, well, you need to justify why you think you deserve as much as, you know, Amy or Chris or Dave Chappelle. And she said, and her and her husband were like, no, 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 we never said that we um, wanted that much or deserve that much money. But in a way, they kind of are due to the fact that they keep saying, you know, like, well, you keep saying that I'm a legend like Chris Rock and Dave Chappelle. But how come they have like these um, eight, seven, eight figure deals while I only have five hundred thousand dollars and wanda sykes only got two hundred fifty thousand dollars and you know just going back and forth like that my thing with that is let, let's kind of break it down let's kind of break it down let's talk about the boycott itself now we live in a day and age where people are easily offended by things or people feel like something is oh you don't like black people oh you're racist against white people mexicans immigrants the list goes on and there's almost not a day where you could just go online and not see that some a group of people are boycotting a company or a restaurant for one of whatever reason or somebody was charged with uh, sexual harassment. Now it's the Me Too mo movement. Time's up. There are just so many different things 
going on in the world right now it's honestly hard to keep up with and that's and that's pretty sad yet incredible at the same time that there are just so many things going on like if there's any kind of social injustice and yes they should be addressed and dealt with but in my opinion in my opinion i'm just i'm just a person i'm not in the music film or show business industry but i'm just talking as a regular person kind of looking from the outside in you know and i feel like when it comes to the boycott it's something that i didn't want to participate in because if you look at her initial video where she talked about why people should boycott Netflix due to gender and racial biases, you really need to, uh, Charlemagne. I'll give him this. I'll give him this. He made it clear where he's like, look, in that, and that's why I gave you Donkey today. You were really unclear of why people should boycott Netflix because it seems more of a personal situation you're going through rather than you know something of gender or race. Because you look at Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock black male comedians getting what 20 million dollars each in their contracts amy um amy sure i can't pronounce i'm sorry i'm not familiar with her last name uh, i mean like charlemagne everybody has their opinion i don't think amy is that you know she her type of comedy really isn't my kind of comedy not saying that she's not funny i just don't feel like i relate to her kind of style of comedy that's all but you can't knock the flat fact that she is a female. Yes, she's white, but she's getting thirteen million dollars. I believe she initially was offered eleven, but then they fought back with a counter offer for thirteen million. Then Monique, you know, of course, got the five hundred thousand. But here's the thing: if you look at the people she's asking to boycott Netflix, we're looking at the everyday working man or woman. Netflix is one of the most inexpensive things for us to actually afford in our lives. I mean, you look at cable being what, 70 to 100 plus dollars versus Netflix, which is, I honestly don't know what the current price is. I think it's either 9.99 or 12. It's around, it's around that ballpark. Either way, it's lower than 20 bucks. Let's just put it that way, 20 bucks a month, lower than 20 bucks a month. Now, by us not using Netflix, what does that mean for us? I mean, I really don't know what that would accomplish. Like, let's say in the long run, Monique does get the money she deserves because I will say this much. I grew up looking at the Parkers. Uh, I saw Monique on, uh, I believe the Parkers was a spinoff of the uh, Moesha show. Then I remember seeing her on Two Play That Game and various other roles and movies. Welcome Home, Roscoe Jenkins and whatnot. And, you know, I'm familiar with Monique, but I want to be honest here. I feel like one of the strongest points that The Breakfast Club made, and I feel like a lot of other uh, media venues said this, and I agree, that the industry, is, especially Netflix in this particular case, is more of a what have you done for me lately kind of thing. I'm not knocking the fact that Monique is a legend. I feel like uh, there are plenty of different legends and icons out there. Um, here, here's my best example. I feel like uh, DJ Envy said this on a follow-up video after the interview was posted on YouTube. It was not the Donkey of the Day video, but pretty much the Breakfast Club breaks down uh, Monique's Donkey of the Day. He said um, something about hip-hop comparing, uh, I believe, somebody else to JC. Here's how I look at it. Look at somebody like Diana Ross or... Um, uh, Gladys Knight, who are music icons and legends in their own respects. Now, let's say there was a venue for both um, Diana Ross and somebody like Adele or uh, Taylor Swift or Ariana Grande, just one of those individuals. If you put those two side by side, I feel like, you know, it's pretty obvious that somebody like Swift or Adele would be offered more money than Diana Ross. That's not taken away from the fact that she's a legend, but you look at who's current, who's going to draw in a lot of people, a huge crowd, a huge view. That's pretty much how I look at it. And when it comes down to Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock, and Amy, those people have been working their butts off on tours. Uh, Amy, again, not a big fan of her comedy, but uh, the fact she sold out Madison Square Garden, had a major tour, best-selling book, a hit movie. Yes, you know, it might not be as big as Almost Christmas, but my thing with that is I, I thought Almost Christmas was a pretty funny movie. I'm not going to lie. I feel like Monique was my favorite part of that movie. Um, I just like her dynamic of with, uh, a, who was it, DJ Young Fly, the young cat that was trying to hit on her. But at the same time, it, it, I get that she's trying to come across humbly, but it feels like she was trying to, you know, warrant the success of that movie on her. But you look at the fact that Gabrielle Union, um, I know Carrie Hilson had a little uh, recurring role, J.B. Smoove, uh, DJ Youngfly, Danny Glover, just to name a few of the stars in that film. And I, I feel like when it comes down to that, that was probably one of the biggest Monique roles that I re recall her in since Precious came out of several years ago. So you also look at the fact that 
why are people boycotting Netflix? Like, why would they? Like, if Monique gets the money and whatnot, what would that do for us as an individual? Like, if I boycott Netflix, the only thing I can see happening is myself losing something that I can afford that I could watch movies on a TV because when your message is, I want to, I want everybody to boycott Netflix because they offered me $500,000 to the everyday woman, man, $500,000 is a game changer. That's enough to pay off my student loans, my car, uh, put down for a house. I have money in the bank for quite some time. I'm a single man, no wife, no kids. So $500,000 would be a blessing. That, that would be amazing. So I feel like her initial approach was not the right approach. It's just my personal opinion on that. Now, when it comes to donkey of the day, I feel like that is something that I will admit that research should be done before you label somebody that title, because I will say this much donkey of the day is for everybody, white people, black people, any race, any gender. There have been various people on donkey of the day. I just feel like Monique coming on the breakfast club just to get her. I mean, even though it wasn't said, it was pretty much like her being angry about getting that label and wanting a retraction. A retraction was never said, but you know, she just wanted to know why she was labeled that. And if you look carefully at the interview, again, both sides, Charlemagne and Monique made valid points. But the thing is, Monique is like a smooth talker, like she was making valid points, but I can't really count the number of times she, I can't even recall her actually answering a question. That was the thing. It seemed like every time somebody asked her a question, she was like, Okay, now do you know so and so and how they went through? I didn't feel like any questions were being addressed. I feel like that's why this interview was a bit uncomfortable for me to actually listen to because it seemed like the tension was there. There were really no questions being addressed. I think Charlemagne addressed why he gave her donkey of the day, which was the whole you know justification of what have you done for me lately, uh, using like Me Too movements and all these um, racial things into the mix to make it seem like this is something we should be doing. But it really does seem like a personal situation. And I feel like Netflix isn't really phased by that. I mean, you know, again, I'm just a person looking on it inside out. So, I mean, outside in. So I don't have like all the major numbers. But I feel like when it comes to Monique, does she have that drawing power? I think DJ Envy said it best. I think he even said like the people on Monique's Periscope said that he's the only one in the breakfast club they like. And. He said like, hey, I mean, like these are, you know, said to be rumors from people you've worked with in the past that have labeled you as difficult. And let's say if I was, you know, I'm a businessman and if I was running a company and I saw you on the list of people to hire, I wouldn't hire you. I wouldn't hire you for as much as somebody like uh, Dave Chappelle due to your reputation, because that reputation precedes you. So you wouldn't be offered as much as somebody like a Chris Rock or Dave Chappelle. But the thing is, I mean, honestly. The bigger question is, how many people out there are actually supporting Monique? You know, why hasn't anybody stepped up? And I feel like, you know, the fact that she um, had that thing again, you know, it's a situation that happened with uh, what Lee Daniels and um, Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry. And if you look at the fans of Oprah, Tyler, Lee Daniels and whatnot, that's a pretty big chunk of people. So when you look at that number of people versus one woman with a, a fan base, is not going to look so good. You know, I really don't think it's going to go anywhere. I mean, I hope she gets a special out there, but I want to be honest here. I, I'm more well-versed on Monique and TV shows and um, movies. And looking back at her past specials, you know, when I was a kid, you know, I believe the one that was on Netflix was the, uh, we could, I could have been your cellmate or some along those lines. Most of, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, I'm talking from the specials and shows and whatnot I've watched. Back before Monique had that drastic weight loss, Mo, I, I'd say about 70 or 80% of her jokes had to do with uh, skinny, quote unquote, bitches. And then I remember she kind of disappeared for a while. And then it was reported, oh, Monique came back strong. She, she lost a lot of weight. You know, I was happy for her and all, but I was a bit concerned because from my memory as a child, teenager and whatnot, seeing Monique, most of her most of her jokes, stand up and whatnot and material had to do with I'm a, you know, black, big, beautiful woman. And I'm confident in that. And then it pretty much her material was drawn to or steered towards skinny women and whatnot. And how, you know, don't, you know, talking about going to a gym when I want to go to a Krispy Kreme and things of that nature. So when she lost that weight, I was like, OK, I wonder what kind of material she's going to come with now, because 
she quote unquote became the person she used to stab at kind of like Taylor Swift another example when she first came out with music I don't, I'm not going to lie I'm a big Taylor Swift fan especially the old Taylor Swift you know curly hair glittery uh, glittery guitar talking about you know like the mean girls the cheerleader girls the evil girls the girls that date around and whatnot and then talking about being the victim and dating uh dating all these guys who you know really weren't who they said they were and then you know when she got straighter hair cut her hair got rid of the guitar she kind of became the person she you know wrote about so basically she had this one persona to get her foot in the door but then she transitioned into the person she used to talk about in a way with Monique is kind of the same thing. But I think the major thing to take away here is, did they try to renegotiate or, you know, up the deal? I feel like the biggest thing that is a problem aside from the five hundred thousand dollars, I do admit, I really do think Monique is worth more than five hundred thousand dollars. Would I pay her 20 million or 13? Most likely not due to the fact that it's all about drawing power. I feel like if Monique and again, this is. This, these were my initial thoughts before I found out about the whole, oh, well, if you sign this deal, then you can't do any comedy things or tours for like two years. And that's why it's important. Whenever a big story like this comes out, I try my best to kind of wait two to three days for the story to be out there. Because as soon as something is trending, you get all these clickbait articles and whatnot. So I wanted to wait to see what the real story was before I tried to post anything or do a video. Now, I feel like when I first heard the story, when I first heard the story about 500000 I thought, well, maybe it's not that much of a big deal because my attitude is when somebody says I'm only worth so much or, you know, I can only, I, my, my limit is so high, I do my best to prove them wrong. Like, I would have taken that $500,000, did one hell of a special that would would that would have got way more views. And I mean, it may not have gotten as many views as like Amy or Dave or Chris, but it would have been a special so good that people would have been talking. The reviews would have been stellar. That way I could go to Netflix like, well, you see now $500,000 is all I'm worth, huh? Why don't you look at those numbers? See what you think now. That would have been a great way to say, hey, you know what? I got this chump change, but I can use this for my own special start a tour. And then the notoriety or the advertisement from Netflix I feel like Netflix would have been a great outlet for the younger generation to be more aware of who Monique is. I mean, literally, I'm 26. I feel like the younger generation here aren't as familiar with Monique as they are with, let's say, a Kevin Hart or um, a Chris Rock or a Dave Chappelle. Because the Parkers, and I, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, was like her real only sitcom out there. It was pretty much her sister, sister, her Moesha, her Martin. And that's really not on the air like it used to be. So I feel like young kids most likely don't really know or are familiar with who Monique is. So using Netflix would have been a fabulous way of getting her name out there. So if she went on a tour, then her tickets would probably just, you know, easily sell out. But then I learned about the whole situation with the two year contract. Yeah, that is a problem. I would definitely have renegotiated for higher than five hundred thousand dollars because if you're telling me, OK, you're going to be on the bench for two years, but here's five hundred thousand dollars, then that's a problem. I feel like there should have been some kind of negotiation where, you know what, either up to five hundred thousand dollars or you can give me this up front. And then you could then we can make a deal if if my special hits over a certain amount of views that you only anticipate me making then I should be paid more some along those lines. Oh, sorry about that. I had to get my computer charger. But when it comes down to it, let's go back to the breakfast club. I, I feel like um, it was a tense interview. I feel like um, I, I really can't say the whole Charlemagne and Lenard situation. I'll put it this way. She came in there like an auntie, like, you know, I, I found a tweet that said, like, you can tell based off the glasses that Monique was wearing, the Breakfast Club was in trouble. And another tweet is like, Monique reminds me of that grandma whose house you don't want to go to after church. I mean, it was funny stuff, but I'm not really here to poke fun at anybody. It's really about my thoughts on the situation. I feel like, you know, if I was in a job and I had a certain title or I had a certain name for myself, then I would want to be called by that name unless I gave the person permission to call me, you know. Um, something other than sir or whatever my title was so I get the fact that she was coming up there like you know uh, auntie calling her calling him Lenard and whatnot and I think DJ Envy even pointed out that it was a bit disrespectful to not call him Charlemagne because that is his name on the air and then uh, later on Charlemagne said he didn't have a problem with that but uh, you know that I mean to me that kind of like made me kind of you know look at the screen a little funny when I saw the interview and then the end of the uh, interview, not when the radio was off, but the camera was rolling, uh, they talked about, you know, the uh, reference to what was it, 12 years a slave and whatnot. 
But I, I just don't feel like there was any kind of love in that interview. I know they started off, they gave each other a hug, said it was a conversation, nothing but love here. But the tension, I feel like there were there were really no kind of jokes and whatnot. Like I saw on the Ellen DeGeneres show when Oprah came out to surprise Tiffany uh, Hardish Haddish. I'm sorry if I pronounced her name wrong. And she joked around about how I wrote you a letter. Oh, but I lost it. Oprah said that. But then I wrote you six more. It was kind of funny because that was like a sensitive moment or a little tense. But it was a happy moment that had some humor thrown in there. If there was some humor in there and the Breakfast Club interview, I think would have been a, it been able to hit home. Again, looking at the t uh, Kevin Hart special, well, excuse me, the Kevin Hart interview where pretty much it was like 40, almost like an hour long about him talking about him cheating on his wife. There was some humor in there. Yes, the situation really wasn't joke worthy. But at the same time, it was lighthearted around a serious situation. So that's an interview I could watch a few times over because it, there were times where I, I could just get some laughs and they're like, my wife, she's my, you're my rib. And then Charlamagne's like, what are your favorite sides to go with your rib? You know, things like that. When it comes to this interview, it just seemed like it was really tense. There really wasn't a lot of love there. I think Angela Lee, Ye almost got, uh, Lee shot, got shot down a couple times, especially when she brought up the, um, people who were giving Monique negative reviews from a photo shoot they did and she was like well baby if you don't say the names save it for the playground I'm like oh snap and uh I, I, let me just put it this way I think the energy that's being placed on the boycott I feel I think Angela even said this in a um the donkey of the day video it's like it, it seems like she's going on a boycott tour instead of a comedy tour I will say this much in terms of Monique I feel like everybody knows her now like, you know, people who may not have recognized Monique or uh, remember her because it's been a while since she's been in the spotlight in terms of a major like comedy special or a TV show or whatnot. They know who Monique is. So if this is a publicity ploy to get her name out there, it definitely worked. I do feel like there it obviously there is gender bias anywhere you go, uh, racial bias, whether it's the workplace, um, movie, Hollywood, whatever the case may be. But I feel like in this particular scenario. I don't think it's something that I would have blown up to this proportion. Like I would have handled this behind closed doors and I get that they were trying, I believe, you know, her and her husband said they were trying to make phone calls, but nobody was answering. They hung up and they weren't able to renegotiate, I, I guess. But I feel like this is the kind of thing I wouldn't want to put my name attached to in terms of if I were Monique, I wouldn't want to, um, you know, blast a major company like like netflix because the bigger question is and i think angela brought this up at the end so what's next monique oh we're just going to keep on fighting babe like this special is going to happen we're going to keep on fighting but my question is what if what if netflix doesn't want to renegotiate what if netflix renegotiates but it's not the money you want um uh, will another network take you that's my major question because netflix if people didn't want to believe the bad reputation due to um, Tyler, Oprah, and Lee Daniels, then they're definitely going to know about the reputation that comes from this Netflix situation because it feels like most of the interviews she's in, there's really not a lot of, again, love there. It just feels like it's the same story every time. And what's the result? Like, I want to know what is going to be the resolution of this. Like what would satisfy Monique and her husband? Like, I'm not going to sit here and say, Oh, she should fire her husband because it's bad business decision. Like that's not my, that's not my place to say they're married. Um, he's the manager. Obviously I'm guessing he, she chose him to be in that position. So that's her call, not mine. But I will say that calling your manager daddy on the radio during an interview is a bit unprofessional i feel like that was another reason that made me kind of uncomfortable because i, I feel like you know th even though you're trying to shut down a situation for being called donkey of the day and you came in there poised you had a calm demeanor i don't think that calling your manager daddy even though that's your husband over the radio was professional that, that's just my opinion on that and i just look at the situation as a whole and say if I were to boycott Netflix, what would that do? Like, you know, if she got the money that she felt she deserved as a legend, would some of that money go back to charity or whatnot? Because here's the thing. That's why I feel like it's a personal situation. She wants us to boycott Netflix due to being low ball with $500,000. And then from there, she states that it has to do with gender and racial bias. And then at the end of the day, 
if she gets the money that she wants, um, I, I wouldn't say wants, but she feels she deserves, like, what's the end game in that? Like, you know, what would that money go towards? Like, if it's not going for a positive cause and whatnot, then at the end of the day, what am I boycotting Netflix for? So um, this video is, uh, I wouldn't say longer than I expected, but I just wanted to get the ball rolling. I just wanted to get my thoughts on there, uh, out there in regards to the situation. I feel the interview itself by the time of this recording is, over 1.5 million views on Netflix. I mean, excuse me, not on Netflix. 1.5 million views on the Breakfast Club um, YouTube page. So I don't know. This could be one of the biggest uh, Breakfast Club interviews up there with Birdman. Put some spec on it. But uh, overall, you know, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Um, do you think Monique deserved Donkey of the Day? I will say this much that Donkey of the Day is a bit humorous, but at the same time, the Breakfast Club is a major, major media outlet, especially with uh, black culture, black people. I feel like Donkey today is something that should only be given, a, you know, somebody should only be given that title after thorough research was made. And I will admit that that was one thing that I feel like caught the Breakfast Club off guard because they had some of the details, but they didn't have all of the details. That's why I felt like it was a very back and forth interview. But on both sides, I mean, especially Monique's side, I just didn't like how no questions were really answered. I feel like if you're on a Breakfast Club, a major media outlet, a platform, I would want to make it clear why I want a, you to boycott Netflix, why I want to make it clear that I am a legend and this and that. And I mean, I'm not even going to talk about the view because that Whoopi Goldberg thing, that was that was pretty wow. That was interesting to say the least. But, um, you know, hey, what do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Also, to um, all of my subscribers out there, this is probably one of the few non Tyler Perry related videos I've done on the channel. I would love to uh, do more things like this on this channel because we're almost at 20,000 subscribers, so I feel like this will get more views. But I also have my other channel, Young Buck 888 A link's going to be in the description below, and you also see a little um, icon on the screen. Now you can click on in order to subscribe. So if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Let me know what your thoughts are, and I'll talk to you later.